today I'm coming out publicly and exposing that uh, Kipkali Akones killed Mr. Salat. I do not recall the full names of Mr. Salat, but uh, he was a brother to Nick Salat, the Secretary General of Kanu, and he was the son to Isaac Salat. Isaac Salat's full name was Isaac Kipkorir Salat. Uh, in 1992, I had uh, given my presentation to the task force for the TGRC headed by Professor Makao Mutua. I also gave a similar statement to the real TGRC headed by Ambassador Kiplagat. In both cases, I was warned of the implication of naming people and I was told to be ready to, for cross-examination. Actually, many of the government uh, commissions, you could be warned of that. And um, when you gave your full real names as I appear, as the official names, then they would quote the person. But if you wanted your identity to be not known, then they could not mention that. They would just say, a cabinet minister did this and that. What was Jijazi? But if you gave the real name, and uh, if you are told and you said that uh, you don't want to be cross-examined, then your evidence was never taken into writing. So I was asked in uh, those two and other investigative uh, commissions which have been brought up by my Kibaki government, I was asked if I could uh, disclose my full names and also if I were ready for cross-examination. In the two, uh, Kipkali Akones was told about my advance evidence and he chose not to cross-examine me. I even remember when I said Biwot killed Uko, Biwot wanted to cross-examine. Uh, it was a parliamentary select committee where he used uh, the late uh, Mutula Kilonzo, senior, uh, but uh, when they were told about me, they chose not to cross-examine me. Uh, to start of how Kipkali Akones killed this uh, gentleman, we start with the father. The father had one eye, and uh, people used to call him Moshe Dayan. Because we had an Israel defense minister who was a general, was also a mono-eyed. Isaac Salat was very close to Moi. In that, uh, you know when Kenya attained independence, civil servants were also allowed to triple into politics. So he had started uh, Kalenjin, uh, Kipsigis youth group, and they were allied to Kadu and such things. So that... Uh, by around 1968, Isaac Kipkorir Arab Salat was uh, placed in the Ministry of Home, Office of the Vice President and the Ministry of Home Affairs. He worked directly under Moy. And then in 1974, he contested and won uh, the Bomet seat. When he won the Bomet seat in 1974, 1978, when Moy became the president, they were close. Uh, he won the 1979, he won the 1983. Yeah, those are three terms, 74, 79, and 83. Those days, serving for three terms was a very long time. You will also discover that during those days, uh, Moi surrounded himself with semi-literate and age mates from each tribe. Mulu Mutisia, Jenga Karume. Uh, when it comes to Kalenjin, there was Isaac Salat. It's when Isaac Salat had died, that is when Barnetun took over. But uh, if you look at that team, you'll find that Isaac Salat was relatively highly educated. One thing I noticed which was very funny about Isaac Salat was that even though he was uh, uh, reasonably educated, but Moy retained him as an assistant minister. 
the same to the coastal kingpin who was uh, Sharif Nasir. Uh, I remember when I was working for the intelligence that some backbenchers would go pay a visit to uh, Isaac Salat wanting to be appointed cabinet ministers. You are a backbencher, you approach an assistant minister and request him to facilitate for you to be appointed a cabinet minister. And when Isaac Salad would tell you, he would tell you, and a nunua betri, mpia. What he meant is that you, you should listen to news throughout and then you'll hear your name being appointed uh, in the one o'clock news, news uh, uh, on the Voice of Kenya. So Salat was very powerful, very, and uh, he was also popular, yeah. He was genuinely popular on the ground. That one I can say without any doubt. Uh, and then um, around 1988, 87, he developed cancer of the throat. And he developed the cancer of the throat. He died in November 1987. He died in November 1987, just before the 1988 general elections. Uh, having not groomed uh, a successor, either biologically, because some people when they die, immediate family members take over their seat, or they groom uh, political sons or daughters political children. He never groomed any. And that is when uh, Kipkalia Kones took advantage. When Kipkalia took uh, advantage, uh, the family was mourning and it was not organized on whom to take over. Kipkalia Kones won the by-election and he also won the general election in 1988. He was made a minister, some of these small inconsequential ministries. Uh, then when he was made a minister for those small ministries, uh, in 1990, Ouko died. For those who know, know I was deeply involved in the Ouko case. So when Ouko died, uh, a lot of pe uh, some people were arrested, including uh, Biwot. So President Moy saw that there was a need to relieve of Biwot his job. When he relieved him of his job as uh, Minister for State in the Office of the President, Kipkalia Kones was transferred from that non-script ministry into the Ministry of State in the Office of the President. And you know those days when you stepped aside, just like uh, George when he stepped aside to become Minister for uh, Constitutional Affairs, he wanted the new AG to be uh, to extend his power into the powers of the person who took over from me. The same applied to Nicholas Biwot. He wanted to control uh, the Ministry of uh, State in the office of the President. But Kipkalia Kones was very quick. Kipkalia Kones was very quick that he dismantled all power pillars of Biwot and placed there himself. Biwot was uh, felt threatened. So he looked for several options, and one of the options was to make sure that uh, Kipkalia Kones is not elected in the 1992 general elections. So he decided that he would uh, he decided that he would groom one of the Salat sons, and it fell on the late son who was killed in 1992. So Biot really uh, handled, and you know, being the minister of state, especially those days. You did not have time to visit your constituency. So one time, when the elections were appear, approaching, Kones went to the ground and found, just as youths nowadays say, a ground vitu ni tafauti. Uh, he found that the it had shifted and this gentleman was going to take over. So there was a sub-district, nowadays they call it sub-county, security committee, then had the information that uh, Kipkali Kones was organizing for AK 47s to be uh, brought from Uganda. The sub, sub, the sub county committee, or as it was then called, sub district, sat down and decided to raid uh, Kipkali Kones homes. They raided and no gun was found. 
after they sat down and wrote their, uh, their recommendation, forwarded it to the district security committee, which was forwarded to them. Then when uh, I, it, the information reached Kipkali Akones that his house has been raided, he got a, a note with the sub-district security committee and transferred all of them to hardship areas, except the intelligence officer, whom, you know, in the meetings, uh, he does not, you can never trace his whatever. And then, um, uh, Isaac Salat's son, or Nick Salat's brother, was then shot, fatally shot in Nairobi, and the guns used, and the ammunition used, and everything was used, uh, fitted well with what had been received. Uh, the number of guns, the number of ammunition, everything was found to be equal to that. But that was around December 1992, and Moi could not take action against uh, Kipkali Akones because of what was happening that uh, general election uh, and that is how it was unfortunate that uh, we all die but I feel it is unfortunate that uh, I was not given uh, uh, many of my presentation especially things to do with the uh, political assassinations I've always wanted a cross-examination as an intelligence officer I uh, would advise anybody cross-examination is good. It is not good for you, the, the witness. It is not good for the accused, but it is good for the justice. You know, when people cross-examine you and dig deeper into your mind, there are some information which you may have forgotten or which you may have overlooked, which can come out. In many cases, cross-examination usually assists in finding the real truth. It is unfortunate that Kipkale Conest died before answering such things.